What's up, everybody? It's your favorite marketing genius's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Magic Square Sound Wall. This is on loan to me from Robert D. Of course, we're gonna talk about this guy. We're gonna talk about the marketing behind this guy and why it's smart but also frustrating. And then we're gonna have some final thoughts. But in order to do any of that, we're gonna first take a look at accessories. So he comes with left and right ejecting finger hands. I'm not sure why, it probably would have made more sense to have left and right pointing hands and then just one ejecting hand. Then one pointing hand, scratch that, it has a second hand, I just found it, it fell out of the box and landed somewhere. So it does have a second pointing hand. And then the two relaxed hands that you saw in the opening footage. He comes with an Energon Cube chest maker thing. It's purple translucent and it's made well enough. Now it doesn't cover it in the instructions, but you can kind of have it sit inside of his chest or you can move it out to about there. But you have to have the, the thing down, the chest piece the plate down. Getting it to stay here, which is where it, it should be made to go, I can't, I can't get it and I don't want to scratch any paint off of this thing, but I can't get it to fit in. So that's kind of a bummer and a misstep. So we have his two signature kind of weapons. One just has this handle that flips down, the red paint around the the, the barrel, so to speak. And this one has a, a significant more uh, amount of paint. It has the silver inside of here. It has the red paint around once again. And it's, it's a thicker line that they have to paint, but it's also done a lot better, which is probably par for the course. A little silver paint there, did I mention that? That looks nice. And then you can slide out, you know, the kind of signature you know, tip of the weapon. He'll hold this one just fine. He will not hold this one. But this one can peg into either side of the shoulders by using that little peg system there. You can also store them in alt mode by taking your piece and plugging it in to the inner flap of one side and your peg here and pegging it in to the actual calf or ankle on the other side. He comes with a decal sheet also that you can use to kind of spice him up a taste, which is cool. And lastly, he comes with laser beak. And of course he comes with laser beak, but once again, we'll talk about that a little later on. Tons of paint on it though, silver paint, red paint, all throughout, deco nicely. Laser beak will fit in his chest, but be mindful, it is a very tight fit. So it's not the easiest to get in or out. In fact, I'm hoping I can get it out, but I can. Just be mindful. All right, so we got the laser beak and then we have to transform it, right? So we can poke the head out, so to speak, flip out the wings, and and then bring the feet, or should I say feet, down to the bottom. Then you can flip the kind of signature weapons up to the top. Great mugger, little thing. And then you can flip these around and dude, it's a really well done laser beak. Really, really, really well done. This feels like Magic Square kind of back in stride, whereas I feel like before, you know, our last couple of releases, rather, they had gotten a little off, off or out of their lane. This feels like what I expect from them. This feels good. You can make the wings flap a little bit. I know that's not accurate or whatever, but it's still cool. Um, Painted to the nines, beak is painted, eyes are painted, silver, red paint everywhere. Really sharp, really well done. So let's take a look at the figure. And first of all, I'll say that like, I think proportionately and everything, like it looks right. I think the sculpting looks right. Like the feel of it is, is definitely magic square feel, but you know, that kind of softer plastic, but it looks good. It feels good in, in my opinion. And it's sculpted well, proportioned well. Like I don't have any issues with it. The head, we have silver paint and red metallic paint. For the eyes, you are on a swivel. And then you get a hinge up, no hinge. Oh, you do, I guess it's a, oh, it's a ball peg? Yeah, it's a little ball peg up in there. So my bad, you do get a little bit down and then you get the full range up. So all that's good, no issues. Then we have the shoulders, which are basically a universal. They get you up to there and around and you also get a reverse butterfly to an extent. So that's nice bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. Doesn't work when he's holding the gun, unfortunately, because of the butt of the rifle, so to speak. And then we have the red stripe painted around the forearm and where the hands plug in, they swivel. For the middle bit, we have the yellow paint, which looks great. You know, uh, yellow paint's hard to do. I say it all the time. It's also especially hard to do on top of black. Um, and we only have a little bit to do on top of black. The rest is on this purple translucent, but it is nicely done, sharp and clean. And that matters for this figure. Uh, you can get the plate down to there, perhaps even, no, that's about it. 
It's a translucent plastic, so use a little bit of caution. We have a waist swivel, an ab crunch back, nothing forward. The hip skirt here will get up and out of the way. That has silver paint on it for the button controls. And then you have ball pegs underneath for the full Van Dam and the full Monty, so no issues there. Thigh swivel built around the socket that houses the ball peg. And then we have a double jointed knee, I believe. Yes, double jointed knee that gets you the full run. We have silver paint, this gray paint and yellow paint, all done beautifully clean and sharp on the lower legs. And then for the ankles, we have an ankle tilt down. We have the slightest bit up. You can see where it comes out, like the angle is ever so slight and a pretty nice rocker that's pretty clean inside of the housing of the lower leg. So I dig that quite a bit. And yeah, that's him. And there he is from the back, clean as a whistle mag. Size comparison wise, there he is with our Tiger Tracks of Legends figures, our Hasbro Stunicon and the old Iron Factory Blaster. And there he is with Iron Factory Tarn. Hope that helps. All right, so let's get him transformed. The first thing we need to do is get this head sorted. So bring down this pelvis flap here, rotate this bit around, and then we want to spin the head so that he's facing back towards you now. Lift up this stuff here, tuck his head through. which you had to do at just the right angle. And then you had to bring down this flap here. <clears throat> this moves around, oh, that's not great, is it? To the front and sits there. The head then tucks inside of the chest cavity and this comes back to hide it. Now we have to get the pelvis piece around to the back. So flip this down spin it 180 and flip it back up. For the hands, take this flap, flip it out to 90 degrees and then tuck the hand in while making the flat no longer parallel to the forearm but perpendicular. Do that to the other side as well and then you can rotate both shoulders around so that the hands kind of meet towards the back. All right, now comes the part that's a little involved. So split the legs so that you can see the ball pegs underneath and then rotate so that the ball pegs are facing towards the front of the tape deck. On this side here, just unfold this and then just start unfolding. There's a series of flaps, one, two here, and then there's another one here at the back side of the leg that'll flip down. Now, where this is pegged in here, the key to this, is, it's, it's not that complicated, but this needs to sit in there. So there's a series of foot flaps there, and if you maneuver them just right, when you open this up, you can move the foot up, and then at the toe hinge, flatten the foot so that you create a flat spot at the bottom of the leg. And you just have to maneuver this in a way that will allow that hinge to go into the corresponding slot and then you can wrap this or back around for the for the time being. Let's try to show that again. I know it's a little complicated. Open all this up. Just flip all the flaps that you can. This one always gives me a little bit of grief here. Ow, mother flipper. Flip, 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 flapper. Good night, dude. All right, there we go. And then unpeg this knee here. You gotta rotate the entire thing down, rotate the foot up and flatten it so that you have a nice flat surface at the bottom and then make that one little notch fit back into there into the knee there. And in the end, you're kind of left with this. You gotta open these back up, my bad for telling you to close them. Um, now, make sure that this hinge here is flipped up on the back. That will plug the arms in and keep them kind of stable. And then rotate the legs up. This tab here will tab in to the end part of the leg. Then I'm having a hard time seeing, but 
and same for the other side and then you close your panels here and that is this guy pretty much done I'll get him cleaned up we'll take a look at him and here it is and it's kind of fine it's cool enough it looks largely unfinished to me uh, but it's it's decent enough to sit here like this you would think with the amount of engineering that's involved here with everything flipping and folding and flapping and about and about and about that it would clean up a little bit better than it does and it doesn't so I'm not really a hundred percent satisfied with this of course this will still open in the mode and everything and you might be better to turn the head around otherwise give me a little peekaboo but I think that ultimately it's kind of a E for effort kind of a thing it looks good from this angle and this angle only, everything else, it begins to kind of fall apart a bit, unfortunately. But, yep, there it is. And there it is next to Tiger Tracks. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. It's mainly that it's, it's a lot of engineering that doesn't pull off a very clean alt mode. You know, that's my biggest beef. I don't have an issue with something being super engineered. Tons of things that have to move all about in order for you to pull off what you need to pull off. But it needs to pull off what it needs to pull off. And this one I feel like kind of doesn't. It's fine, but I feel like they could have probably had 10 less moving pieces and pulled off something just as good, if not better. The other thing that I have to bring up for a negative is the marketing of it, right? The rollout. So the three most popular tapes for Soundwave are Laserbeak, Rumble, and Ravage because they were the three that were in the cartoon most of all. Now those may not be your favorite, but it doesn't change the fact that they're the most popular. So they put Laserbeak with this guy. I think they're putting Rumble with the Soundwave repaint of this. And then they're putting Ravage with a sort of tape assortment box set. And the reason why they're doing this is to sell all three products because the chances of them being able to sell this guy without Laserbeak are slim to none. The same way that it was next to impossible for Takara Tomy to sell Ratbat without Sound Blaster. And I'm just not a fan of that. I'm just not a fan of the tactic. I get it, and it's smart in a business sense from their standpoint. I just don't like it. But that's all I got. Oh, and the fact that I've had the waist fall apart from the waist swivel mushroom peg three times now. So that's not my favorite thing either. Positives wise, it's sculpted beautifully, it's painted beautifully. I'm sure it'll make a great sound wave as well. The laser beak is phenomenal. The accessories are all appropriate and plentiful, except for the Energon box, that's a negative as well. But by and large, I mean, it does everything it's supposed to do down the line. So it is ultimately a recommend from me, and I think it's a well done piece. I just have a couple gripes with it kind of from a business standpoint, and then I think the alt mode leaves a little bit to, to be desired for the amount of work you have to do to get there. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Thank you.